Hello and welcome to the Cozy Meadow Knits podcast. This is episode 20. My name is Sophie and I am coming to you from Shidiac River, New Brunswick, Canada, where I live with my husband and two kids. Um, and this is my knitting podcast. I am an obsessed knitter. I knit every day and I want to knit all the things and I love all the yarn, just everything knitting related. Um, so this is a space where I share my uh, recent makes, my current whips and any dream knitting and I have a lot of dream knitting because I want to make all the things. Um, so yeah, I am not an expert knitter. I make mistakes all the time, so I'm not here to say, you know, this is perfect and nope, I'm just a regular knitter. And um, I'm just so happy to be here and I'm happy that you are here as well. I hope you are well. Um, I'm doing okay. <laughs> Can't say I'm 100%. If you can hear in my voice, I am very nasally. Um, I have a cold. It's it's not the end of the world, I'm okay, just I cough a little bit. So hopefully I can get through this without any incidents. <laughs> um, I hope you have a cozy beverage um, in your project because I have tons to talk about and show. I am drinking tea. Um, with a little bit of honey and Isn't that cute? Oh my goodness. I love it. This is a mug that I got at winners. It was five dollars um, It was a total splurge because I do not need any more cups or mugs and um, Yeah, I totally bought it because I just it brings me so much joy so um, Okay you can find me on Ravelry as Cozy Meadow Knits and on Instagram as well as Cozy Meadow Knits. Everything that I will talk about and the patterns and the yarns will all be linked down below. And if ever I get, you can always put a comment down and ask and I will gladly answer. Um, okay, so let's get on to the knitting. Um, this is what I am wearing. It is the Lento sweater and I love it so, so much. I finished this a couple weeks back. It's been a little bit, uh, but I had not shown it complete. Um, so yeah, so this is the Lento sweater. I'm going to stand up and show you what it looks like. It is a very simple sweater pattern um, nothing really too too fancy but the fit is so great and it uses not a lot of yarn which is amazing as well so I'm just gonna show um, it does have a rolled collar I had never done this before um, it is not hard at all it was very well explained um, and then you get into some raglan increases, which I find fits me so well. And there's three quarter length sleeve and nothing fancy on the ribbing um, as well as on the bottom. I knit till I was happy with the length. Um, and I think that's it. I'm gonna sit back down try not to make too much noise with my chair okay so yes the lento I highly recommend this pattern it is a paid-for pattern but it is a wonderful pattern um, so the yarns that I used excuse me, are it I used a fingering weight yarn held with a strand of mohair so this is the fingering weight yarn that I used. It's by Circus Tonic and it's just gorgeous. It's so, so nice. I bought this um, last summer. Oh, sorry. I don't know if I said uh, the name of it. It's called Conch. Um, 
It's on her Jubilee sock and it's uh, 75 superwash merino and uh, 25 nylon. And it's just really great. I love it so much. I love the color so much. Um, I think I'm a little bit far. I'm gonna scoot up a little bit. There. Um, and this is the mohair that I held it with. It's a uh, tin silk mohair. And the color number is 3553. It's just this dusty pink, dusty rose, rose gold, I don't know. It's just, ugh. I love it so much. And I am so happy that it pairs so well together. Made the most beautiful fabric. This pattern, um, I'm not sure. I can't remember if it's if you knit it with six millimeter I think I went up to 6.5 millimeter not sure it's in my project notes uh, but it's bigger needles so it doesn't use a lot of yarn so I was saying I bought this last year from twin stitches designs uh, Julianne had a an online shop and I bought it here and I bought three skeins I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I knew I wanted to make a garment. So I wanted to make something special. Anyway, when I decided to do this sweater, um, I had three skeins and this sweater only used one and a half skeins. I still have a full skein and I have, I don't know how many grams, but quite a lot of the second skein. Like that's crazy. And I have one full of this and more on one of like the last skein that I used. So it really doesn't use a lot of yarn. Um, I made size three and yeah, it's just, it's so nice. I will definitely make another one at some point, maybe next year. Um, I just love I love fingering with mohair. I love it so much. It's warm, but it's not crazy warm. Um, it's super soft, but I might even try just a DK weight yarn. And, tr you know, I don't know. Possibilities are endless, and I will definitely knit this again. Um, yeah, so I don't know if I said, but for the rolled collar, you do not need to do a rolled, a, a rolled collar. That's what is in the pattern but you can you don't need to do it i did it because i had never done this before and i'm so glad i tried it out it looks great so that's my lento uh i love it so much i'm trying to think if there's any other modifications i think i did i think i picked up two extra stitches on the arm to not have any armholes that worked out really well so i did another decrease down but i followed the pattern pretty much to the t on that um what else and the length again i did it as however long i wanted it to go so yeah so that's my lento i love it and i wear it a lot um okay i have some more finished projects uh, I'm just looking okay I will start with this one so on my last episode I was with Nancy Wheeler and it was so much fun so much fun to podcast with her um, if you do not know her you can go and watch my last episode um, she's a hoot and um, she's so funny and super nice and it was really much it's it was so much fun we're gonna do that again at some point we just have to <laughs> it was just so much fun um so on the last episode i showed the tiny beginnings i think i had just cast it on and that's all i showed and i ca i had cast it on the olive branch tea by twin stitches designs and i finished it <laughs> I already finished my t-shirt, my first tee. Oh, I love it so, so much. And 
it fits great. Now, I just took some footage of me wearing it and um, I will insert, I think. I think I'm gonna do that instead of just changing. But yeah, so I will show you the video after. So this is the my t-shirt, my olive branch t-shirt. Uh, what can I say about this one? It's awesome. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It fits great. I love the lace detail on the yoke. You start it by knitting. Um, it's a top-down sweater, so you start from the top and you do a little bit of ribbing and then you go into this little lace pattern. It is not hard at all to do. Very simple. Um, and then you do some increases and then you split for the sleeves, you knit, 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 and then you do some ribbing on the bottom. Now, the modifications that I have made, there's not a lot. Um, I think in the pattern, the way that she increases, I think it's a make one. Um, and I find for me, I don't know why, but when I do that in certain patterns, I get holes. I need to research this a little bit more, but yeah, I get holes. So I was scared to get some holes when I was doing the increases. So I used a left leaning increase. Um, and I found that it worked really well for me. So you, as you can see, the increases are here, but I don't find they're very visible. And again, I did that because I find that my increases were very visible. I don't know why, but anyway. So that was one of the modifications that I did on this one. Um, the, uh, sorry, <laughs> the other modification, um, when you pick up again for the sleeves uh, in the pattern, uh, you pick up and then you finish off the ribbing um, with some ribbing. What I did, uh, and it's in my project notes, I knit eight rounds of stockinette stitch and then I did the ribbing. The reason why I did that is because I find it I find that this pattern is very similar to the Everyday Tea by Twin Stitches Designs that I knit last year and I loved it so much that's why I wanted to knit this one. Uh, but it's I think the sleeve the sleeves are the same as the other one if I'm not mistaken. And on the everyday tee, I just find that I see my armpit a lot. So that's why I thought to elongate a little bit the sleeve and I don't get that. But that's me, that's my preference. It's still great on my other tee, but I wanted to try it out on this one and I actually really, really love it. And so that's, I think that's the only other modification. I knit, knit, knit according to pattern. I stopped when I felt it was long enough for me. And I did some ribbing and I think I did a little bit of uh, less uh, ribbing than what is called for because I was not paying attention to the pattern and I was at a spot where I think, okay, I'm gonna start the ribbing. And so I think the pattern calls for, oh, there's my hair. I think the pattern calls for more, like a longer ribbing than this, but this was fine for me as well. I find like the finishings on the sleeves and the bottom of sweaters, it's, you can do really, I don't know if you can do whatever you want all the time. I don't want to say that either and not follow the pattern, but I find that I've done them, I've done a couple of, of garments now. I know what my preference is. so. I usually just follow what I want to do for that. And that's my everyday tea. So I'm going to insert now um, some footage of me wearing it and I'll be back soon.
Okay, so I'm gonna take another sip of my lovely lemon and honey tea. It's nice. And on to more finished objects. I told you, like, this is like, there's a lot <laughs> that I'm gonna go through. Hopefully it's not too long, but famous last words. It's always, my episodes are always way longer than I intend them to be. Um, but yeah, okay. So, my next finished object was a secret test knit that I can now talk about. It was a test knit for Nancy Wheeler. Um, again, I just mentioned her before, but she has a podcast. She is a sock designer, sock pattern designer. Um, and this was a secret test knit that I did for her. Um, these are called the Hexi Diamond Socks. And they are so lovely. So I have I have both, but I'm using the, the other blocker for another sock that I will show you. But this one is the Hexi Diamond Socks. It's such a great pattern and um, it's a very special pattern. I am so honored to have been able to test knit for Nancy because this pattern is featured in the 52 Weeks of Socks book that the new one that just came out. Um, I would show you the book, but I completely forgot to pick it up at Nancy's because I ordered one and I bought one. And um, life, I don't know, I totally forgot. I was supposed to go pick it up uh, last week and I completely forgot. So, um, but yes, I will insert a picture of the book it's amazing like this book is the lane books it's called lane books um it is spelled len in french uh, people say lane uh lina or len i don't know but anyways it's that and it's a big deal like it was a big deal i remember when nancy um sent a message and she's like, like, do you want to test a, a, a sock that will be featured in the 52 Weeks of Socks books? What? That's amazing. I'm so happy for her. Um, yeah, and it's an amazing pattern. So this, I made this. This is a very special yarn that I chose. I had it in my stash, and it's from sweet skein of mine and it's merino cashmere and nylon blend and it is so soft and luxurious and it's very fitting for this lovely amazing pattern so there's hexi diamonds all along the top of the sock and on the leg and as you can see there's some garter bumps in some and some stockinette it is not complicated, it's not hard. You just need to pay attention a little bit, but these are so special. So thank you so much, Nancy, for letting me test for you. And I cannot wait to wear them. I can finally wear them and show them off. Thank you. <laughs> so those are my first pair of Nancy's socks. And I have another half finished object and you guessed it it's another sock by Nancy Wheeler and it's another test knit and this one is awesome too oh isn't it nice this is the tits up socks you've heard that correctly I'll go to, I'm going to write that down below tits socks uh, tits up socks <laughs> oh we ha we had fun we are having fun testing this pattern because yeah we're all like we're we're in a little group and if there's any issues or if there's anything that we don't understand we just you know message and everyone answers or nancy answers and we see all of the all of the talk 
and I think at some point Leanne was like I don't think my tits are showing up correctly and I'm like oh they look like little boobies so <laughs> yes that's the intent because Nancy is going to be releasing this pattern on April 14th I think I have that date right and uh, I think that's the premiere of the series finale of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. That's a show. I don't know what it's on. I don't know if it's on Netflix, Netflix or Prime. It might be Prime. Not sure. I have not watched it, but I really do. And I even said that I wanted to watch it while knitting these, but I just, I didn't. <laughs> I will. At some point but I didn't and the reason why um, it's called tits up is because in that series or like during the episodes the main character is a stand-up comedian and she every time she goes on stage this is what I got from Nancy this is what I understood from Nancy so when she goes on stage her manager which is another lady um, tells her tits up and go and you know have a great show so that's why she named it tits up to be released on the day that the series finale will be released and it's so much fun so you can you'll be able to knit this up and watch the show at the same time um, so the yarn that I used for this isn't it oh, isn't it gorgeous look at those colors mm -mm -mm -mm. I love it so much. It is called, where is it? <laughs> I'm looking for it right now. Oh, it's in my bag. It's in my project bag by Yellow Petal Handmade. I will talk about her more later. And yes, so this is Revolution Yarn. So that's Thai. And this is the yarn. Oh, it's so, so pretty. And the name of it is Napole no. Neapolitan twist and it's so so nice so I bought this um, a couple months ago it was in her shop and I really really love this color and I didn't know what to make with it but I knew I would probably make socks so I bought it and I'm so happy I did because it's like the perfect spring color and so this is a mini skein that I got in my advent from last year uh, from Sweet Skein of Mine. And it's really, really lovely. Pale, pale pink with some brown speckles. And it just really worked out with the sock. I love it so much. These are made with little cables. Um, I am doing this sock on Magic Loop. It doesn't have to be on Magic Loop, but it's a top-down sock. Um, I'm not going to give anything else away because it will be a paid-for pattern, but Nancy's patterns are so affordable. They're only $5 Canadian, and I know on the first weeks that she releases a pattern, she donates the first week's proceeds to charity. Like, how awesome is that? So... Yes, look out for the Tits Up Socks by Nancy Wheeler. I will definitely share on Instagram when it will be released and you can follow Nancy as well and you will be notified when it's done, uh, when it's out and released. And this is the second one. I am here. I need to crack the whip and uh, be done with it because I only have one week to complete it. But... I'm almost at the heel so they are so much fun to knit so much fun highly recommend this one okay that's enough uh, so that's it for sock talk um, yeah. now I think yes that is all of the finished objects I have two whips that I can show you. Um, the first one is, I love it so much, 
I'm so excited. The first one is the Reed sweater. And it is by Anna Joanna. And it is featured in this lovely, lovely book that I got for Christmas from a really nice co-worker. Um, he's a good friend. And I call him my adoptive son because he's way younger than me. <laughs> and I'm his work mom. But he got me this book and I love it so much. It is full of beautiful, beautiful patterns. And this is the Reed sweater. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, yes, this is my next color work. I love it so much. And as you can see, I have a little bookmark and this is by Yellow Petal Handmade. I am not sponsored. <laughs> I'm not sponsored by anyone. Um, I just really, really enjoy her makes and I have even more stuff to show from her later. <laughs> um, okay, so that the Reed sweater. I started and I completed the color work of the yoke. Isn't it nice? Oh, I love it so, so much. Okay, wait. It is on Barbara Cord, a Barbara Cord, because so, I was trying it on to make sure that it fit. And oh, it's just so, so lovely. I don't know. See? So it's going to fit like this. I love it so much. Oh, it was a joy. To knit the color work it is not hard at all oh there is one part there's one part and it's here where it's three your all of it is just like two colors that you're working uh, here on a couple of rows there are three colors to manage while doing the rows here now I have never done that before it's not hard, it's just really slow. <laughs> it's really slow and it's so easy to get the yarn tangled, but it was totally worth it. As soon as I was done the couple of rows, I was happy and it went really fast after that. So I'm here, um, I think I'm at, I'm doing some uh, shaping with some short rows. I think that's where I'm at and then I think after I will uh, separate for the sleeves um, okay so it's just so lovely I love it so much um, it's not complete but I already highly recommend the pattern <laughs> okay uh, the yarns that I'm using for this I am using I am oh I have the tags here okay it is called Bio Balance Yarns by BC Garn. Um, the colors are in my project page. So those are the two colors that I'm using. Oh, where did it go? Oh, here. Okay, so the light gray is the Bio Balance. And the dark gray is Bio Balance as well. And this is... I think it's it's wool and cotton okay yes it's 55% wool and 45% cotton it is super soft it's really soft like I'm like I love this and just by touching it like this I was like oh I don't know you know it, it'll be okay but worked up it's ju it just feels amazing it's light but it feels so soft too. So those are the two colors by BC Garn. Um, and this color is by Revolution Yarns. Again, she has a lovely shop. You can check her out. I will have her link down below. Melanie is super, super nice. And this is the uh, pink purple purpley pink color that I chose and it's a 50% merino and 50% cotton again I was on her site and 
she was having a sale. <laughs> I feel like that's every time I purchase something, it's like she was having a sale. Um, yeah, so I had bought a few, a few episodes ago, I showed when I bought this yarn and I bought three colors of the BC Garn Bio Balance. And I had bought a dark purple to be the contrast color. Instead of this, it was a dark purple. And when I purchased it, I was like, it's fine. There's enough contrast. It's going to be beautiful. And I swatched with it and there's not enough contrast. I was in denial. I knew it in my head, but in my heart, I really wanted it to work out, but it didn't. And that was okay. But as soon as I saw this and it was like 50% wool and cotton, I was like, that's perfect. So this is a little bit, it's a little bit thicker. It is DK weight, but it is a little bit thicker than the DK weight um, from the BioGarn, but I still think it works. I thought, you know, what the heck, I'm gonna try it out. And it worked perfectly. Um, no, well, there is one modification already, and that's a Sophie design. <laughs> I would say um, it's a mistake. <laughs> if you see here, um, I cast on with the dark gray and I did the knit here with the dark gray. Now in the pattern, that's completely reversed. I was supposed to cast on with the purple and the knit part would be purple and the pearl bumps would be gray. It is a happy accident. Well, it's a happy mistake. It's totally a mistake. Um, but I think for me, it works better to have the dark next to my skin and then have the lighter. I don't know. I just, I think it looks better for me and I'm happy I did that accident. Oopsies. <laughs> but it worked out and I'm so happy with it. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be knitting more on this probably tonight, I think. And um, I can't wait to show more. I love it so much. The simple things that makes us happy, right? Ugh. Yarn. Yarn makes me happy. Yarn makes me happy because there's so many possibly like endless possibilities that you can make with that yarn. It's so amazing. I love it. And I can't believe I haven't had one coughing fit. So I'm very happy. <laughs> okay. Okay. The last whip that I have to show. Are you bored yet? <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. So the last whip that I have is housed in this most beautiful bag oh isn't it oh my god so I I bought this last week there was no sale <laughs> I can't say that there was a sale there was no sales but I had been eyeing um, yellow petal handmade I've been buying her bags she's amazing her name is Penelope and she's in Nova Scotia and I love supporting local, supporting small businesses. Um, I have bought a few bags from her already and I absolutely adore all of them, but they are smaller bags and I've been looking for a bigger bag for um, bigger projects. And so yeah, I totally treated myself. That was the day I bought this the day that I woke up with my head cold and I was like, this is um, retail therapy for me. <laughs> yeah, it made me happy. So I bought it and I absolutely, absolutely love this print. So it's one of her bucket bags. And so they're quite larger and they hold up like this. They have a drawstring to close it up. I'll show you after. And the bottom is, 
quilted. Again, I'm not sponsored. I just, I just really, really love this. It's so well made and I love sharing the stuff that I love. So this is the inside. I don't know. Okay. So it is lined and it has these pockets all around, some small pockets. Oh, that's not really, I'm not showing it really well, but yeah. So it has small pockets all around. I have some scissors and my needle and oh, my glasses and all my yarn. So this is holding my tiny beginnings of my jelly roll blanket. I've shared this, I showed this off, I think on the last episode and I've I haven't made a lot of progress, but I actually picked it up last night because I just wanted to knit, but I didn't want to think. <laughs> so I, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to add some a few squares. So I added these three squares last night and it was great. It was great and I love it. So this is going to be a blanket <laughs> and I love it. Okay, I'm, I'm showing it on the wrong side here. So not gonna say these are all different scraps or um, some leftover yarns i have minis in here from advent minis um, this is commercial sock yarn um, this is hand dyed a lot of it is sweet skein of mine i've got some raven's wood i said i wasn't going to tell you what the yarns are but i am and this is from my Lento, so I'll have a little piece of Lento in there, special. So, yeah. this is gonna grow, and I am actually really enjoying this, so I think I'm gonna work a little bit more, like more often on it. So, and so I'm putting it in this bag. Oops. Sorry. Sorry. So yeah, uh, I put it in this bag because I can prepare and just, you know, have some leftovers and just put them in there so when I want to sit and knit I just my yarns are already there and I can just go and knit so um, yeah so my lovely bag I can show it to you when it's like this and another reason why I got it is that it just goes so well with my decor like I don't really have a style I have like some most of my decor is from the thrift shop or antique shops but mostly the thrift shop anyway but I found that these colors are just so springy and the yarn is I don't know. it's so springy and I'm going to have it on display and it's just gonna be part of my home decor and it makes me happy and I love it so thank you Penelope and oh it I got she made me this as well this little pouch Cute. so I'm gonna put a bunch of notions in there zip it up there you go so that's my last whip works in progress and I can talk a little bit about future future knit Future knits. Now, when I showed, I totally forgot about that. When I showed off my olive branch tee, I made that t-shirt to participate in my, our uh, make along, me and Manon from La Violette Yarn Gift and Co. That's my local yarn shop. Um, we are hosting a mal. So we're, call, we're calling it the Cozy LV Mal, and it is a make-along for a summer garment. Um, it started, I don't even remember, I, I don't know if we started it on March 1st or 21st, but it, it's, it's on now, and there's still tons of time to cast on a summer um, garment. Um, whips are also welcome. Uh, the end the, the make along will finish on June 21st and um, 
there are going to be prizes. I know Mana said that she was going to give a prize and hopefully I can give a prize as well. Um, so to participate, um, you can put a post on your whip or your cast on of your t-shirt or summer garment. So yeah, so I made my first tea and I am so happy. Uh, I will have a t-shirt, a new t-shirt for the summer and I want to cast on more because <laughs> I want all the summer garments, of course. Um, there are so many beautiful t-shirt patterns out there. I say t-shirts, but there's also like um, sleeveless tops. Um, anyway, tons, tons on Ravelry and um, I'm on there constantly <laughs> looking at them. So I think my next cast on will be for another summer garment and it is the Dingley Dell by Isabel Kramer. I'll put a picture here of it. Oh, I love that pattern. So it's a v-neck, as you can see, it's a v-neck and short sleeve. And so I got some yarn. This is going to, this is my acquisitions part as well. Um, a couple of, maybe, maybe last month. I think it was last month. Um, I got some yarn by Sassy Strings Yarn Studio and it's lovely. Oh, it's so nice. I really, really, really love tonals so much. I love variegated, but I love tonals. And this is just like the perfect gray with a tiny, tiny blue undertone in it. Um, I kept eyeing it on Tracy's website and one day I just said, you know, what the heck, I'll get two skeins and I will make a t-shirt out of it. Um, so this yarn is 75% superwash, 25% nylon, and it's 463 yards per 100 grams. So there's a lot of yardage in here. Um, so I had this, wasn't sure what I was gonna do with it, but so I have, I've, I'm gonna need your help. I have options. So when I saw the Dingley Dell and I'm like, yes, I want to make a stripy shirt. Perfect. Now, I really wanted to use something that I already have in my stash. So I remembered that I had purchased this beautiful, isn't it nice? Oh, this is called Breathless and it's from Sassy Strings yarns as well. I bought this like last year and I used it in one of my shawls that I did um, in the fall, but I only used a little tiny bit. And so I have pretty much, I think there's 89 grams in here. So I thought to stripe, to do the dingly dell with this. I love it. Now, the only thing that I'm concerned about is I'm not sure, I'm already too short. I don't have enough of this pink. Now, I can make it work. I have, with all of these three skeins, I have more than enough yardage to make the t-shirt. Um, either I am going to make the pink stripes a bit narrower so that it doesn't use as much yarn so that I can I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm scared about it, but I think it would still look good even if these stripes would be um, wider and have smaller stripes in the pink. So that's an option. And then, and then I was looking in my stash and I saw this. And this, I don't, I think maybe back in January, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but I got this because there was a sale. Um, this is Ginger Snaps yarn. It is a Canadian dyer as well. And this one is called Vintage. Um, it is a 75, 25 Merino. 
463 yards as well. I think this is like, I think this might be the same base as this one because it's it looks identical. And this would be good too. And I would have still not what the pattern is recommending for the contrast color, but I would still have more. So I don't know. I am, I'm torn. I really don't know. I, I really, really like this and this will work. I know both will work, but so I really like this, but I still really like, oops. I still really like this too. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments, I guess. I don't know. Ah, anyway, anyway, I know it's going to be great, whatever I decide, but I would really love to hear what you guys think about it. Um, yeah, so that's going to be my next cast on. I've also purchased the Salty Air Tea by, I think her name is Samantha Gitta. I'm not sure. I'll have her here. I'll put a picture. That's another lovely uh, t-shirt pattern. Um, I think, and I want to make another one too. <laughs> so I don't know, lots of options out there for t-shirts and I just love them because I work in an office and there's air conditioning in there. So I am not going to be hot with these in there. Would I wear those t-shirts in 40 degrees Celsius weather, like outside? No, <laughs> but for work, they are perfect. Um, what else did I wanted to say about the t-shirts? Oh yes, I was forgetting. So I think we're supposed to, it's, it's out there. Uh, we've posted about it, so it's supposed to happen. Um, me and Manon from La Violette Yarn Gift & Co. Um, I will go to the shop on Tuesday night and we're supposed to have a live. We're gonna have a live cast on. So if you wanna join, if you wanna cast on with us, it'll be my second tea that I will cast on. Um, and if you already have, if you already cast it on, you can come still and join us online and I think I'm going to do the live on my channel and I think she will be doing the live maybe on her Facebook page. I'm still not sure what, <laughs> what we're gonna do. I have no idea how to do that, but I'm gonna look it up and we'll get, we're gonna make it happen. It's gonna be fun. So I'm just so happy because we want to do the summer knits now because we wanna wear the summer knits in the summer will be done so you'll be happy you'll be happy that you'll have some summer garments for the summer um, I will put down some more information uh, that I have for the live and um, I think that's it for the yarn talk I hope I didn't forget anything I don't think so um, yeah so I guess I can go into life stuff. There's not much to report. <laughs> um, it's been busy. Um, uh, we've had some hockey tournaments. So uh, last weekend was the last tournament of the regular hockey season. And now it's spring hockey season. So my son's and he loves hockey. And so he loves it. So we support him and uh, we go watch, I go watch the games and they're fun and I ring that bell and I yell encouragements to them. Um, so that was fun. Uh, so we went to Halifax last weekend. I said that already. Um, I can, I think I will add some footage. I took a little bit of footage of uh, what we saw over there, of our drive. Um, what else have we been doing? My daughter is in volleyball and the games have started again. So those games are during the weeknights. So it's very busy, <laughs> very sports busy, but um, we're happy. We're happy. Um, we're just happy that they're getting um, some exercises and they have the team aspect of it. It's just, it's good. It's good. 
So that's pretty much it. And I knit every possible moment I can. <laughs> I think that's all that I have for life stuff. Um, we are looking forward to spring. Well, spring is here, but um, we still have snow. It's melting away. Um, we're getting like days with like two, five, two degrees, five degrees Celsius. So it is melting away. Um, and I am for that. Looking forward to the summer. Um, I think that's it for life stuff. Um, I usually, uh, I usually share a recipe and I'm trying to think, I didn't think ahead. I didn't think of the recipe that I was going to share. I think I'm going to share my recipe for frico. Frico is a, it's an Acadian chicken stew. Now, I took this footage, I took this footage, I already took footage of me making it. Um, that was the day that I got the head cold. I was determined to take some footage anyway. So I was making chicken frico because I was sick and I wanted some hot soup and it was really, really good. So I thought I'd share my recipe. Um, my recipe, like if there's like, you know, hardcore Acadians in, that are watching, um, mine is modified, so it might not be authentic, but um, it's still really good. So I will share that. If you're interested, it'll be down below and I will have um, some footage of me making it. And um, yeah. So I think that's it. Uh, I am so, so happy that if you're still here, thank you so much for joining me, um, for um, knitting or crafting with me. I'm honored. <laughs> I really am. Um, yeah, I just love sharing my knitting stuff and I love hearing about it. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like this video, you can like, you can subscribe, you can leave down a comment um, letting me know what you think about the yarns, you know, what, what about my next t-shirt or what you're knitting on. Yeah, let me know what you're knitting on or let me know what summer garments that you would like or you are knitting. Yes, I need more inspira inspiration. Um, I don't, but I want, I want more inspiration because <laughs> I already have like a super long list, but I love seeing all the patterns. I love knowing what other knitters are knitting on. Um, yeah, so I hope you are cozy. I wish you, um, health. <laughs> so, you know, keep up with your vitamins. Um, and I wish you all the coziness and all the yarn and all the knitting and all the relaxation and everything cozy. <laughs> yeah, that's what I wish for you. Thank you again. And I will see you hopefully really soon. Till next time. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. Um, today is Sunday and I am sick with a cold. I really wanted to record but couldn't um, because I am not getting on the camera today. <laughs> um, I am still in my PJs and I'm just about um, ready to make chicken frico and I thought I would share the process with you. Um, chicken frico is a it's an Acadian stew kind of like a, an Acadian chicken stew. Um, so I make this almost like every two weeks um, and we all love it and it's really good with uh, fresh baked bread or buns or something like that. Um, so I am putting it together right now um, in a pot. I have two bone-in skin-on uh, chicken breasts and for my now I'm going to share my recipe. It's it's not authentic. Um, it's just how we make it and it usually comes out yummy. So um, if you already make a yummy chicken frico, um, then keep doing that one. 
<laughs> but if you've never made it, this one's pretty good. Um, so I add 12 cups of water with those two chicken breasts. So that's it. That was the 12th cup. And then um, I add chopped onions. This is about, um, well, this is a medium sized onion chopped up. So I just add that to the water in the pot. Um, I use, this is the non-authentic part. I use um, chicken broth, but I use dehydrated uh, chicken broth. This is the brand that I use and I use it all the time. I really like it. Um, but anyways, you can use any chicken broth if you want. I just find it's tastier with chicken broth added. So for this, um, I put about Eight, ta uh, eight teaspoons that I've already measured out in here, and I'll add that. And then I add one teaspoon of salt, and it's just really roughly like this, and then just like so. And then I add, I don't know, I eyeball it. It depends on how much pepper you like. I add about a teaspoon of pepper. Yeah, that's good. That's about what I usually add. And then the not so mystery, but very important um, ingredient is summer savory, as you can see in my very fancy <laughs> labeled um, container. Um, in French, it's called sariette. And um, yeah, you put a whole bunch of this. This is the magic ingredient really, aside from the chicken. Um, so I usually put so one teaspoon, I don't know, I always eyeball it. So one, two, I would say at least three heaping teaspoons. You can use less, you can use more. Some even put more. Um, I might put in a little bit more. There, good. And so what I do, um, I mix this all up and then I boil it for about an hour. That will cook the chicken and um, once that's done, I will remove the chicken and add, oh, there goes my bread timer. Stop. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I will take out the chicken once it's cooked and leave it on heat and we'll add some potatoes and okay. some carrots. So an hour has passed. Um, the chicken has simmered for an hour. I've taken out the chicken and I added two carrots, two large carrots chopped up. That has been simmering for 12 minutes. And now I am ready to add the potatoes. I have cut about seven potatoes in just roughly chopped chunks. As you can see, nothing fancy. You can chop your potatoes however you want, but this is how we usually do it. Um, so yeah, so then I'm gonna add these potatoes to the frico, and I'm gonna let that cook for about another 15 minutes, just at a simmer. And I will check if the potatoes are done, and if so, I will take it off the heat and then shred the chicken and add the chicken in, and voila, you are done. Um, some people do make dumplings for this. I think uh, back in the day when I was a kid, I ate so many dumplings that I really can't eat them anymore. <laughs> so for me, no dumplings. Uh, but yeah, so I will show you the end results once my potatoes are cooked. Okay, so now the potatoes are done and I've taken it off the heat and I have gone and shredded up the chicken. So this again was two bone-in skin on chicken breasts. I will add it. Ooh, that's hard to do when holding a camera. Sorry for the shadow. Okay, so and there goes my chicken frico oh that looks delicious also i find that i make this earlier in the day and i let it sit i will let it cool off for about like a couple of hours three three hours maybe 
and I find that the taste is, it tastes even better when, when it sits for a little while. So that's the chicken frico and oops, yeah, got some bread done. So this will be really good and I'm pooped and it will be really good for my cold. Also, Advil cold and sinus. That's right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. See you later.